This is the Commodore 64 motherboard that I took out of this bread bin, the donor keyboard. Not sure if I'll leave this sitting here or if I'll test it out. I do need to do a RAM fix on here and I've got some chips ready to go in. What I can do is I can piggyback these and use my test cartridge that I burned and see which ROM chip, RAM chip isn't working and replace them. If there's more dead on here than just that, right now it's just telling me it's one of these down here that's uh, busted. If there's more dead than that, then maybe I'll have a look, another look at it later. But uh, the Ultimate 64 is gonna replace it anyway. It's not like I'm lacking any hardware. And here we have the Ultimate 64 ready to go in, replacing the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, it very closely matches the port layout of the original Commodore 64, but with new gubbins where it makes sense. So, <laughs> got USB ports, HDMI. You've got the classic ports here for the, uh, the floppy drive, etc. And you've got reset switch, power. You've got your game ports, your uh, joystick ports. This is the user port for when you're doing your own hardware. Obviously, that isn't populated out the back because you've got all this in the way. Um, so at some point I'll get a user port adapter through the post and then I'll be able to do my hardware hacking. Um, but that's all right. It's, it's not a big deal right now. It's based on a Altera Cyclone FPGA, which means that it can update the core and send us uh, regular fixes and improvements. And uh, there's a JTAG port there as well for doing your hacking. Real time clock and uh, you've got the Wi Fi. As you can see, it's uh, ESP32, just like with uh, a lot of the Arduino projects I've been doing. And you can put in legit SID chips into here instead of using the FPGA version. So I'm hoping to get hold of some Commodore beige filament so I can print off a nice plate on the side there. Or black might look nice. So let's see what I can get hold of. With all the screws in, that's how it looks from the back. As you can see, there's uh, something you don't get on a regular Commodore 64 there. You get an ethernet port. You get two USBs. You can still run your cartridge games, still run a floppy drive, still run a tape, and you've got HDMI out. And around the side, as I said, you've got your power and you've got a reset switch, which is also how you function the menus, and then you've got your joystick ports. And there you have it, the beautiful Commodore 64 boot screen. Let's try a legit Commodore 64 floppy.